<laughs> Welcome to Just Charisma, episode 23. I'm your host, Braden Charisma, and alongside me today is my boy, Winston Cook. Hello, everybody. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. That's awesome. I'm doing awesome. I'm excited to have you here, and yeah. I've been trying to get you here for many moons. Yeah. Even yeah, though it's absolutely. only 23 episodes in, you know? Many moons, yeah. Absolutely. So Winston is a community coordinator. He's yes. going back to school, doing some upgrading, and he's got an adorable relationship and a cute couple doggies. Yeah, dude. Cute puppers, yeah. yeah. German Shepherd mix and uh, Shih Tzu Jack Russell mix. It's great. The yeah. little one's my favorite, I think. I like how he kept stealing <laughs> the Pong balls when we went camping. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Um, so tell me about a bit about the community coordinator. So the community coordinator job I've been working at just over a year now. Probably one of the best experiences. Like it's it's like a one in a million kind of chance that people get offered. So, For sure. So it's a developing you know position. So when I got hired on, the the job position was kind of um, it was like very flexible in what what you can do and what you've learned. So it started off with me doing um, like basic. Uh, coordination jobs and um like um getting community members within my community to attend meetings um info sessions to kind of figure out what we're doing okay. as um an economic development uh business so a lot of um what we did is presentations like we have a lot of uh, operations that are um, creating revenue for our community and that's in hopes for us to become more of a self-sustaining um, community financially. Right. So a lot of that goes from uh, forestry, uh, aquaculture, like digging clams or fishing. Right. Whatever it is um, that you can create revenue from, from the ocean. And um, administration, keeping everything in line, you know, uh, keeping that paper trail and whatever. So good old business uh, administration stuff. Yeah. And what I've had to do in that job is give presentations, meet like um, a variety of different types of uh, businesses. So I got to meet this um, very young like entrepreneur, like aquaculture company owner. Okay. And um, he explained to us what like uh, with our initial meeting that he came from like this small town he like came over with his parents from China or something I believe it was okay it was something within that kind of region so um, he grew up in that classic uh, hardworking parents working at a restaurant that like family like, Chinese yeah restaurant kind of yeah thing. yeah and he like grew a love for um, like aquaculture and the type of food like uh, they usually prepare with their meals <laughs> and um, got into that kind of industry and went to school for it and also like that job took him all the way to like Alaska and up oh, and down wow. the island so okay. he got to see what kind of um, like groundwork I guess you do when you're working in that kind of field yeah so like uh, fish farms um, uh, like harvesting shellfish like a uh, clams like um, vanilla clams take I, I'm like fuzzy on the number but there's like a certain number of years that it's like legal for you to actually harvest the clams okay so like um, I, I can't even remember but you have to wait that like period before you can actually dig them and then you have to worry about the type of species the type of environment and there's like so much that goes into it okay that it's it's just uh at first, it was a little overwhelming, but it's totally something um, worth learning. Absolutely. For sure. And I think I kind of like went off on a tangent a bit about the type <laughs> of industry, but he, after um, being kind of um, taken advantage of, I guess, uh, financially by one of his previous business partners, he decided to buy another business. And okay. um, I think it was, was another a great great business that he's been actually profiting to like prior to when he bought it it okay. was actually going um south so it, like uh, he's made insane improvements just because of the work ethic he's been working from from like childhood and everything for sure right yeah and uh, it's it's like really cool to see someone that's that sincere and um you know that hard working without being um feeling like entitled 
Uh, not not necessarily entitled, but like uh, naive about things. Like he he's very knowledgeable to okay. what he's doing. Yep. So like um, he's not running in the direction he wants to go blind, which is really, really inspiring. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So then you you were mentioning like in like the before the show and stuff that it's that taking on this job has really uh, helped you like in your social skills and like absolutely. I guess kind of come out of like or shell a bit on like I guess yeah being social absolutely so like yeah I want you to go into that a bit uh so within like during the end of high school and uh graduation I didn't really have that kind of idea on what I wanted to do as, for sure as most people don't yeah so I was like you know I'll take the gap year which turned into I think like two years before <laughs> I actually um attempted to do anything other than sleep in all the time right but um sounds like Jordan <laughs> the first jab. <laughs> Sorry, George. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. We love you. We love you. But um, so getting into that job, I was actually um, it transitioned into the job I'm working because I had this uh, like linked mentorship program, which was um, a job from a grant from the government. It is just like this. Uh, it's very kind of confusing on right. what it was, like how how you obtain it. Like um, for First Nations communities, especially uh, since most, maybe not most, but some of them are, uh, they struggle to sustain themselves financially. That the government usually has grants and stuff that you you write, you, you do like a grant application, and if, okay. if you're um, inquiries or whatever fit their guidelines for that grant they'll provide you with um, uh, money to create a program that would help someone transition from um, like a learning position to a real life job which okay. which for this case it actually worked <laughs> which was very fortunate because not everyone gets that kind of opportunity and um, shout out to our CEO for believing in me because the improvements that I've seen in myself within the last year have been insane because before like like I was saying with um, not having any direction in like, um, like yeah just in like life in, life. in general yeah uh, after graduation I started kind of um, developing a lot of anxiety and depression as some people do when they don't you know they don't know what to look forward to for right? sure right like there's no there's no goals there's no absolutely there's nothing that like there's no like light at the end of the tunnel is kind of just like <laughs> yeah, you kind of just don't really like know where you're going you're yeah. just in a maze right absolutely so like um so given opportunities like that is it's definitely like one in a million i'd say because i've i've been so fortunate to gain the skills and um the direction and even insight on what i'm capable of for sure to um move forward and it's it's made me like happy it's insane yeah and like you're definitely like even just like like when you did that uh contest with the raffle or whatever yeah, you, see that's something i would never have thought you of doing like absolutely, like yeah. you know so, it's like as yeah it's a big step like absolutely. to see like you know the, the the personal growth and everything it's, right. it's really nice to see yeah it's, it's like that sense of belonging like i've learned in um like my first couple weeks of sociology that social isolation kind of a tongue twister if you say that like five times oh <laughs> definitely um, can be a big contributor because like if you can't find like a place where you can feel like you belong then you feel alone for sure and um when you feel alone you know who are you gonna reach out to <laughs> well, that's just it right like yeah. you know and like it's not that like you can't reach out to anybody. Right, you just yeah. feel you don't feel like you. Absolutely. You just don't feel like you can. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And um, you know, realizing that is, it's like it's like the first step to actually making those changes. For sure. You know, to to become successful or stepping even out, happy. Yeah. Stepping out of the comfort zone, right? Absolutely. And um, so going back, <laughs> I think I've gone on a tangent a couple times, but that's okay, man. So that's after what we're here gra- for. after graduation, like I was doing nothing, like you know what. I, I really like sound design, music production. I'm going to go for that. And, you know, I didn't put enough effort into it or have enough understanding of the music industry or marketing or, you know, creating a following. For sure. So not having that strong of um, 
a start with that in the first place didn't really work in my favor. So that didn't help with um, my, you know, social life or um, any, like, direction of moving forward. Yeah. And, like, there, there was just probably, like, there was probably, like, a month where I didn't have a reason to leave the house. And, like, honestly, it was really hard getting out of the house and starting to find reasons to leave. Because, um, you know, you stay in one place for so long. If you're not moving forward, you're, like, moving backward. For sure. Like, there's you're not, like... You're not stuck. You're definitely yeah. just one or the other. Absolutely. So, uh, with with all that like kind of weird stagnant um, like point that that weird stagnant point in my life where I wasn't doing anything, I was actually reached out to by um, our um, education coordinator for our community, and she's like, "Hey, we have this um, we have this job that I think you'd be great for." And the deadline for us tomorrow, so like get your application in. And since I don't like before that, I had like zero job experience. So like doing the odd jobs, volunteering, it was like half a page. <laughs> so I I handed that in, and um, somehow I ended up getting the job, which again like it that really got me into um, First Nations politics, um, the how to en- engage or. Um, be social within the community and um you know useful tasks on administration yeah and you know actually working because that's that was actually like my first real job where i was making money <laughs> so it was it was interesting like um all of that um was an interesting point for when our administration and our economic development separated yeah so I was doing work for um, various departments within that administration building and I was doing some economic development work and the CEO yeah he's like one of my heroes it'd be cool if you've seen this <laughs> you have to show him <laughs> absolutely um <laughs> I guess there was there. I was working pretty hard, and he he actually interviewed me for the job, without me even knowing. And oh, okay. <laughs> like yeah. he's like, yeah. What what are your strengths? What are you good at? And um, you know, I'm like, I like uh, filing. You know, retaining information, going over information. Um, I like structure and everything like that. And he just kind of incorporated that into like um, what my job is, and a lot of what I do now is from you know, what I'm good at, and then building on top of that with what needs to be done. So it's like um, capitalizing on what you're good at, um, learning things that will make you better. For sure. And it's like, it's like a one in a lifetime opportunity. Like, I I can't stress that enough because I don't know anyone else that's gone through anything similar than this, because I had a hard time throughout high school which has caused me to need upgrading so I can pursue more post-secondary education. For sure. And having that kind of understanding that, you know, there, there are definitely some things that I'm good at and that I can build on, it's, it's crazy. And that's not something everyone has an opportunity to do. No, not at all. So, like, um, having that kind of understanding has allowed me to kind of build on my strengths and gain that kind of um, insight on where I'd like to learn more. Okay. Which, obviously before, um, definitely not the most social person, and giving presentations to uh, 30 to, like, 50 people at a time, it's crazy. Crazy, yeah. Crazy. And um, just having that, like, hands-on experience makes a huge difference, and that's definitely oh, totally. something I'd like to pursue more for, like... Um, other people when I can would I actually have that experience and can pass that forward to someone else like paying it forward, forward yeah obviously. for sure right yeah. yeah so definitely very um oh what's the word uh inspiring it's definitely different from the traditional way of learning right so you go, okay, yeah. you go to school you graduate you go to post-secondary you maybe do some volunteering and then you have to find a job after yeah. which obviously from people we know and so it's kind of like almost common knowledge that, you know, you think you'll just get a job handed to you or you'll have a bunch of options after you graduate but like university, no. right? Yeah. So as people are starting to kind of figure out that that's 
you know, there's other ways to kind of gain that skills through, like, say, mentorships or internships. Oh, definitely. And then that kind of builds on, you know, you get that experience. And um, even if you have someone that was um, in that kind of position and to push them in the right direction, that they will be, like, more efficient at what they can do and um, build on all of that with learning more and greater things perfect yeah it's crazy yeah it's like um going to school like everybody's everyone's like first year second year probably um you know traditional schooling and everything like that yeah kind of just wasting money absolutely <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> no but, but like I mean. um it's definitely a different situation um i couldn't think of anyone else that's that's had a job first that gets them um like great experience in working with business and uh networking so a lot of networking was done through um working with my community and um other businesses around that you know incorporate um good business practices with our community so a big part of uh, finding a job i noticed is networking for sure i i that's why one of the things i really love about this world it's not what you know it's who you know yeah absolutely. and like from there it's like I mean, not that post-secondary isn't a good thing to do, Absolutely. but at the same time, a lot of times, like, you, just from who you know, you can get the job you want. You can get something by, just by knowing this person. You don't necessarily yeah. need the post-secondary. I mean, I'm sure it helps. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, you know, have, having the knowledge, but, I mean, if you're willing to put in the time and the effort, you can, anyone can learn it, right? Like, you, yeah. you may not, like, some people never go to post-secondary and they become super successful. Absolutely. And then some people go to post-secondary and become successful. I mean, there's, like, yeah. there's stories of both, right? right. So yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Everyone's different. It's exactly. Crazy. Everyone's everyone's unique at being them, and they're all on their own unique journey, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's some deep shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is the part of the show called the motivational moment. Okay. So, Winston, can you describe me your passion in five words or less? Five words or less. If only I thought about this before and he told me over text oh message. No, of course. Um, uh, so I thought about it and the, the, I think it's four words. Love what you do. Okay. Because if you don't love what you're doing, it's yeah. kind of like you're torturing yourself, right? For sure. And, um, you know, it's as easy as I can put it in words. So you, you have to love what you do to be able to move forward in that right for sure so so like say if you work at mcdonald's if you love that then there's obviously opportunities for you to move up absolutely yeah if you hate it i mean why 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 are you there there? yeah Yeah. i mean it was like but it's like with any job you know if you hate it you're gonna like i know a guy who works at a grocery store you know he hates it he hates going in and it's like but every day is like he just just the worst day idea every day he has to work and it's like he feels trapped yeah. I don't want to end up like that. No, definitely. Like, and that's that's because you're not given that kind of um, that kind of look over to where the grass might be greener or whatever. For sure, right? And you're like, oh, there's opportunity over there. It might be nicer. The the grass might actually be greener. <laughs> exactly, right? Like, and you know, it's it's having that kind of opportunity and knowing that there's opportunity there. Some people don't know that they have the strengths there. And obviously, um, in talking, I didn't like conversing and being social I didn't know was one of my gifts <laughs> like it's something I definitely had to build on and it's something I'm definitely going to be working on throughout work school whatever yeah for sure and I didn't even know that until you know I had to be I guess what one of my um old uh, co-workers told me is throw you in the deep end because on the second day of that uh linked mentorship program I was asked to speak in front of I think is 40 um, people in this circle for um, like this First Nations reconciliation type uh, event right and they, they wanted me to introduce myself and um, talk about what I do and um, you know why I'm happy to be there and I froze I'm like hi my name is Winston I'm happy to be here um, I feel very fortunate to meet all of you. And then I sat down <laughs> and like, uh, because I was forced to speak in front of those people, I'm like, Oh, you know, it's not that bad. It's not and so then, yeah. It, yeah. It's definitely something 
like uh, exercise you gotta exercise it yeah right it's use it or lose it for sure it's like well it's like when you get thrown into the deep end it's either you're gonna learn how to swim or you're gonna sink yeah definitely. right and most of the time people will swim they most just, of the time <laughs> they yeah just need exactly. that push right <laughs> exactly it's yeah. just like just got that little kick in the ass or yeah. the light under their fire like light the fire under them and then it just once you get going it's you can't it's like a train you can't just can't be stopped yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah for sure that's cool, man. I appreciate it. Those are good, those are good words. Absolutely. Um, so you've been doing some upgrading. You've been talking. You were telling me about you know your social sociology and anthropology. Right. Uh, so tell me a bit about that stuff. Like why? So those uh, those are actually first year university courses. Um, it's it's such an interesting situation. Like um, it's crazy how understanding VIU and uh, my my current employer <laughs> have been on. Um, you know, getting me to further my education. For sure. So, I never had a like easy time learning everything, which um, ultimately didn't allow me to complete my English twelve when I could have during high school. And um, what I noticed is um, not to um, talk bad about the public school system, but <laughs> they they rather would. The, they, what they did with me, I guess, instead of generalizing among the whole population is they wanted me to graduate no matter what that was. Right. So they put me in, I guess, um, the easier classes. So like um, apprenticeship, workplace math and communications, which are which is like the trades math, trades level math. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not something that applies to um, like more academic university courses or fields of um you know work yeah like so just, yeah. You, you're just they're putting you in one place but you weren't you Absolutely. wanted to be in a different place yeah and yeah. me being bl blind to what was going on at the time i didn't know what i was wanting to do so i let them just push me into that place where i'm like okay i'm graduated cool now what can i do pretty much right and yeah. um until not until after i finished high school I was like oh I can't you know apply to um, actual university courses with communications because that's um, that's like a lower tiered um, English I guess so it's something that exchange students were put in and um, it's, it's kind of hard to explain it was just it was not at the level of um, English that is accepted by it um, most yeah. university programs for sure and uh, after a couple times attempting to upgrade my English 12 um, I'm actually still in the process of doing my English 12 and it's almost been like I think four years like since four years since we graduated so, yeah and um, it's it's like not fun <laughs> <laughs> I can see why some people struggle with it and they even like I have certain programs that they market to people because a lot of people have a hard time with English 12 which is interesting it is I mean, um, but since since like I'm still completing the course it's not fun because you have to write about like Hamlet and shit yeah all that stuff that's like <laughs> no interest to any yeah. of yeah and like a, a lot of like um, literary devices that you're not using in post-secondary courses like I've noticed that in sociology and anthropology, I don't have to worry about um, what a motif is. Okay. <laughs> like, like the type of, um, you know, punctuation, maybe not punctuation, that's kind of universally important, but like uh, some very like old English, like you would read in like Hamlet. Yeah. Um, not to shit on Hamlet, but a lot of like fluffy stuff they use to prepare you for um, that kind of stuff isn't very applicable, right? So in like sociology, you're you're learning specifically about uh, society and studying groups of people, and you know you're there are things that they have in the course that kind of prepare you for you know learning what you're gonna do in that course. And yeah, it seems like English well is too broad of a stroke. Okay. Um, for everyone, because like. A lot of people could definitely pursue programs like that and succeed and still have trouble with um, working on their literacy in the way that it's available for you. Right, okay. Yeah. And outside of that, 
I'm I'm at VIU taking the two courses sociology and anthropology, which are amazing. Like um, I have two great professors. <laughs> they're they're like very understanding and like good at their like their field. Of For sure. What they're doing, and um, I was allowed into VIU as in unclassified to work into. A bachelor of arts which, okay which i'm going to be aiming for that way i can um you know develop and build on what i'm good at for sure and i think definitely sociology and anything regarding that will probably be my strong suit because it's been one of the funnest classes okay cool just learning about um groups and um how society runs and everything like we've have, we've have only scraped the surface with that but it's it's like blowing my mind each time and I actually That's found awesome. myself like reading the textbook at home which oh, is not dang. something I've you know really done before it's not something I really did either though I mean yeah, absolutely it's you know you learn in class not at home <laughs> <laughs> right yeah so um I'm working towards that and completing my English so I can actually be enrolled as an actual like bachelor of arts student which is my That's goal cool. and my employer is actually so understanding of um us pursuing more post-secondary education yeah uh to make us better at our jobs so we get that support from our employer to further education and still get the work which is again like something that that's not offered everywhere right? no like a lot of people would be like okay if you're going to school like you yeah. need to feel the work this many out blah 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 right yeah, i'm absolutely. sure yeah i'm so. sure it'd be not good right <laughs> it's great yeah and sociology i think like your original question um Sociology is great. We learned about, I think in the second week, which was probably one of the most interesting things we talked about, was um, looking at um, rates of suicide. And okay. there, are, there are like three different types of um, reasons that uh, populations would um, commit suicide. And it's really interesting. Okay. Because uh, the, the three are, um, I think, is egoistic. So that ties into more so like social social isolation that fucking tongue twister <laughs> and that's that's kind of like you know being alone or being excluded from other social like groups super, i don't know if it's the right one but in, is it introverted introverted yeah i guess yeah the, okay. technically like introverted you can still socialize with people but socializing with people tires you out whereas if you're extroverted you get if energy you get from, fueled yeah absolutely so like um egoistic um would be social social isolation and um, anything kind of regarding you not, you know, being able to fit in, I guess. There, there's definitely more to it. This is just kind of like um, what I can like pull from my brain. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's more so like, um, you know, I guess this is kind of a broad example, but like say if someone, uh, you know, was bullied in school and um, that was kind of like their, their escape, right? So... They, they they couldn't work in that that kind of social environment that they were that right. they were in and um, the other was anomic I believe and that's that's when people um, commit suicide from um, like a very diluted set of like um, governing and um, okay so like you know the the guidelines within the government or whatever are, yep. are like so weak that you know you have that less sense of self so there's not that like social uh, solidarity which is a big word we used in the class which is where it's hard to define you and the group that you're with right so you feel lost okay and it's it's kind of like everything's scattered and it, it tends to happen with um you know, when people overthrow the government or when there's a financial crisis and people don't know where to go because, you know, you don't know where you are anymore. You don't, yeah. you don't know what everything is that you knew prior to um, such a crisis like that. For sure. Okay. And the last one was altruistic. And that's when you have such strong social solidarity where um, the, it seems like the right thing to do to take your own life. Really? Right? And it's very popular, say, with, like, samurais when they lose oh, a battle or yeah, something okay. like that, yeah. or when you're in the army and um, it's, you know, the suicide mission, right? So, like, you do it for the greater good, and that's what your understanding of taking your own life is. So if you jump on a grenade to save 10-plus people, 
that's considered altruistic suicide. So you think it's the good thing to do, and it doesn't always have to be good either. So like, say it's very strong in cult followings, like don't drink the Kool-Aid because that's what's oh, yeah, it, right? Yeah, for that's sure. That's strong yeah. social solidarity. And because you're so um, strong in like social with that group that, um, you know, it seems like um, whoever's idea was or if it seems like a good idea throughout the teachings or whatever of that group that it seems like a good idea, you do it. Okay, okay. And th- those, like, alone grab my attention so much because it sheds a light on a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of, like, why we have the problems we do. For sure, and definitely. And it's, it's diving deeper into those problems to understand, you know, why. So you're not looking at um, the person directly in sociology. You're looking at the group and finding out, you know, why the group might be, you know, doing that. For sure. And those were definitely the three that stood out and okay. it's kind of general categories it's pretty intense stuff like it was it was a really quiet class there's like 70 people in the class and everyone's like they, they didn't want to the teacher didn't want to get too like uh into it because um she would assume that there's probably a couple people in the class that have dealt with say um depression or something like that and they don't want to be it's like they can be easily triggered with that kind right. of topic right and um it's very interesting because people were either so quiet because they were that interested or because they were scared. <laughs> that makes sense. That's crazy. Like Yeah, absolutely. It definitely, that would actually be kind of an interesting class. I'd open you to a bunch of new perspectives. Definitely. And like just a whole new ideas. And um, with anthropology, I think I'm actually in a socio-cultural anthropology. And what we learned last class is what culture is. Okay, yeah. And like I, I still had a hard time kind of understanding like um what the meaning is because culture is not a place um say like oh i love the culture over in india it's not it's not the culture it's the people and culture is a a concept of um why people do things and um how it makes them you know live and for sure and uh, how they pass it down and it creates a lot of um different like concepts is a camera going no no i just i just like <laughs> no. to look at it um so um that's my train of thought here sorry it's talking about uh anthropology right yeah so um how different cultures develop different understandings of the world around them right okay uh and how it helps them survive okay and it's super interesting because one of the one of the first things that um different cultures deal with or different uh, like people, groups deal yeah. with is um, eth- ethnocentrism, I believe. So that's that's saying, oh, that group is doing things wrong because that's not how we do things. Oh, okay, yeah. And, and yeah. the big example they gave of that was how, um, I think it's a Polynesian group um, that practiced eating their dead. Oh, okay. So yeah, so like, like at first, you know, that hits your ear wrong because totally because you're like cannibalism yeah no, yeah Can- we don't do that here right that's wrong you yeah get, you know in trouble and it probably tastes bad <laughs> but they they do that because they they don't want like um so the person that's died they they grab non-relative people to dispose of the body by eating it so the people don't have to suffer the idea that their their lost their loved one has passed away and that's that's their logic behind that but like then we'll never see him again. Exactly, yeah. So, like, they don't want to think about, you know, that that passed-on loved one or whatever. And they so they eat them. They dispose of them. They, they completely erase them from their, you know, life. And hmm. that differs from, like, Western cultures where we, we bury people. Like, um, I'm not too... Like, I haven't given it too much thought on why we do that. It's like, so they have their resting place, right? And... For the Mari, the Polynesian people that do that, they their culture revolves around like not having things touch the ground, because it it's like disrespectful or something like that. Okay. Like that's a that's kind of a broad reach in what I took away from that. But there's definitely a more uh, thorough explanation. Right. But they didn't like uh, burying their dead because they would consider it disrespectful to their family and the the passed on loved one okay and um they they would constantly think about that and that would that would like make them depressed because they're constantly thinking about you know, they're just constantly stuck in a state of sadness absolutely and yeah. that's 
that's just one of the extreme like uh, examples that you know the difference cultural differences with different groups for sure and you know being able to understand that and I, I love it like I didn't think like I was super nervous on um, what it would be like you know to take university courses it's, it's been you know forever <laughs> for sure right like I mean just getting back into it yeah absolutely yeah. and I've loved every class just because it's that's cool yeah it's huge it like turns on lights everywhere in your brain you're like oh that's that's why oh that's why and it just right? blows your mind right yeah. whenever I think of anthropology I think of about Betty White from Community <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every time and I'm just like yeah. I, it's just I'm like oh that seemed like a decent class yeah, yeah. just <laughs> drink your own pee it's, drink your own pee and it's just loaded with vitamins <laughs> and just like you know make a crazy weapon and yeah t- absolutely attack Jeff with it yeah totally. <laughs> it's so cool though like, that's awesome man yeah I love it it's cool <laughs> just wanted to thank you for coming on the show I really absolutely. appreciate it I'm well, glad to have you on thanks for letting me talk your ear off and for sure. talk your guys' ear off so. where, where can the people find you um, my house probably. Probably, but I don't know if you want a bunch of people showing up at your house. That's true. Yeah. So what about on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Instagram, I go by Winstoco. So it's W I N S T O C O. It's kind of kind of like a Condensed. contraction yeah. of my name. For sure. Um, I'm also on SoundCloud. I go. I can't even remember. Isn't it like Z U? As an X E S U? I like. It's pronounced. Yesu, but it's X E S U. Yeah. In SoundCloud. I don't have a lot of stuff. Like, um, I have one huge project that I should probably give myself a deadline for because it's probably one next of my week. Favorites. Next week. Yep. You heard it. You here. heard it here first. You hear it. He's got to be done by next Saturday. <laughs> next Saturday. Yeah, that's uh, definitely where you can find and listen to my my music. I wish I could have elaborated. Like, I'll definitely be here again. Oh yeah, he will. He will. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's, I've had a fun time here. That's good. Um, but to elaborate on like music, sound design, um arrangement all that stuff is like the other half the of other, like the, the shit i love for sure right like and we could um, we yeah. could go on for hours i know yeah, we could absolutely so those are those are the main two places okay cool yeah um yeah look me up if you'd like um i post pictures sometimes <laughs> pretty much yeah that's yeah. nice all right well you can uh if you like the episode hit that subscribe button uh check out the other episodes they're all great and uh well, you know i hope you guys enjoy the show and we'll see you guys next time thanks don't forget to like and comment this thank you <laughs> <laughs>